This is a quilt called Falling in Love with Curves. And I'm going to be showing you not only how to cut the pieces out, but also how to sew these curves without using any pins to pre-pin the pieces before I sew them. Just using a regular quarter inch patchwork foot. I'm Virginia Walton and I've developed this easy method, but it's a different way about thinking about sewing curves. And you'll be amazed at how simple it is to do. So first I'm going to show you how to cut out the individual pieces. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to cut the pieces out. As I mentioned, my name is Virginia Walton uh, at creativecurves.com and I've developed rulers that allow you to cut curves with all the seam allowances included. So what I'm first going to show you how to do is cut the background fabric for this quilt. Now you're also going to find out the basics for cutting any shape. These rulers are based on squares, which give you quarter circles, which means you can do anything from drunkard's path patterns to a quilt that's actually going to be in the AQS magazine coming out the, this summer. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you that once I have cut a square, I'd cut a strip first, and once I've cut the strip, this dash line, which here you can see a little easier on that black fabric, that's part of the ruler section and that shows you how wide a strip to cut. Once you've cut strips, then you're either going to cut rectangles or squares, and that's basically the size you need for cutting. So if I'm cutting a square, I could measure either three and a half, that's a square. On the other hand, I'm very lazy, and what I tend to do is turn sideways, stack up four at a time because things tend to come in groups of four in quilting and cut all four pieces as I need them. Once I've cut that square, then I can take either the outside curve, the convex curve, or the inside curve, the concave curve, and you'll see each one has a solid line on it. That's your seam line, so you better have fabric around it. The same is true here. So to cut the outside curve or the convex curve, I'm going to line it up right on top of the fabric and you can see this is where I'm going to cut with a rotary cutter. This is throwaway. There's not enough fabric left to do having any seam allowance for that piece. Now when it comes to cutting these longer pieces, these rectangles, what they are is where I've gotten rid of seams between individual pieces. I don't see a lot of point in having seams unless I accomplish something. So instead of having two quarter circles and a square, I simply got rid of the seam that would have been between those two pieces. And so what I did then is I turned the ruler over, lined it right up on top of the edge, and you can see here I've got a seam allowance of fabric all the way around, so I've got the piece that I need to sew with. Now when we go to the sewing machine, you're actually going to see me sew these pieces together, as I said, without any straight pins. All right, when it comes to cutting inside curves, and I had just finished cutting this piece, I can cut it one of two different ways. I don't like to waste fabric, so I tend to save fabric whenever possible. And in this case, I'm taking advantage of the width of the ruler as a measuring tool. It's six and a half inches across. So if I simply flip this over and line it right back down, that's actually the shape I need for the rest of the background fabric. But instead, I'm going to show you how to save some fabric by nestling those two inside curves. And I did that by simply cutting this longer strip. It's actually 10 and a half inches long. And what I did here first was I lined that up on one end so that I've got the full width of the ruler, six and a half inches, that's what I need. And you can see here I've cut that piece. Then I simply turned it around, relined it back up, and that gave me the two identical pieces I need. And then I'm only throwing out a little tiny bit of fabric as opposed to a much larger one. Now that's the same basic step I'm going to start with when it comes to the pieces that are the half clamshells. And I'll show you that next. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to cut those half clamshells. As I said, I start out the same way that I did with that last background piece. I start out with a rectangle that is 10 and a half inches long, and it is three and a half inches wide, because that makes sure I have my seam allowance. 
And once I've done that, then the first step, just like with the previous piece, was to cut that first inside curve or concave curve. And this is six and a half inches across. So here we are here. Now I'm simply going to rotate the ruler, line it right back up, cut the second one, and that gets me to this place. The only other thing I need to do next now is cut that outside curve, the convex curve. That gives me my half clamshell. And to do that, I simply can bring this down, line it right back up, and you can see I've got my seam allowance here of fabric, I've got seam allowance here, and I have a half an inch on the end. If you don't have that half an inch, you don't have seam allowance around that point. So this is where we are, and now I'm going to show you all the individual pieces, and then I'm going to show you how to do the sewing. All right, so this is the block that I'm aiming for. And if I've made one quarter of this block, I've really made the whole quilt. So all the steps that you're going to see is I'm going to make this section next when I go to the sewing machine. That is one quarter of this block. Here are the individual pieces. This is the steps it takes to sew them together. Starting down here with the three pieces I just showed you how to cut out. Now, I've shown you how to cut the outside curve on this one, the inside curve on this one. Now remember, these are longer simply because I got rid of a seam between the quarter circles and the squares. Or the inside curve and the square. And then the same is true with this half a clamshell. The only other pieces you need to finish this quilt are the single inside curve and the single outside curve. So while this starts looking similar to a drunkard's path pattern, it's simply where I've taken the half square triangle and simply cut so that I have seam allowance in this piece, seam allowance in this one, and that gives me the accent pieces that actually make this quilt look interesting, not boring final product, of course, is the full block. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine next and then show you how to do all that sewing without using any straight pins to pre-pin anything. So here's a quarter of the block I'm getting ready to sew together. And here are the individual pieces. Now I've turned it this way for a reason. Because you always start sewing at the square corner. And this is the last piece I sew. I sew these two first. And my square corner is right here. Whenever possible, I want to start with that inside curve, the concave. That's the one that stretches the easiest. I want that face up next to the feed dogs because all feed dogs pull slightly faster than the top feeds through on any sewing machine. And it helps control that tendency to stretch. The outside curve, this convex, it stretches just nowhere near as much or as easily. So I'm going to start by going right over left, which frankly is the key to making any patchwork quilt. And you'll notice these don't look like they're going to fit, and that's because they're designed to fit at the seam line, not now. So it's right over left. I've got a nice square corner to line up. And you can see here, I've got my square corner. I'm going to go straight to the sewing machine. And if you have needle down, for heaven's sakes, take advantage of that. If you don't, then you give up needle down. I'm going to hold those threads for the first three stitches and just sew straight ahead. Three stitches on every, almost every sewing machine is a quarter of an inch. So the thing to remember is you want to create a short straight seam just about that long. Enough room to sew three to five straight stitches. And then I'm going to realign the edges and do it again and again. And that's really all there is to sew any kind of a curve. There is one other thing to remember, though. Sounds obvious, but it's where when there's a problem, it's where it usually shows up. And that is you have to move both these fabrics together because there's a seam allowance in both pieces. So think scissors. Bring them both together. When you have a problem, it's usually because you're holding the bottom one in place and you're making that poor top piece do all the work of coming over. When you do that, it doesn't work. So I'm now going to show you, I'm going to bring both fabrics together. Okay. That's why I thought being over my shoulder might help with this. Okay. So here I am, I have my hands on both pieces. And I'm simply bring both edges together, creating that short straight seam. And I sew three to five stitches. And I bring the edges together and sew again. 
I don't ever go further ahead than three to five stitches. I don't care how big the curve is, it doesn't matter. And here we are. Now I'm gonna sew until I'm just the past halfway through. And then I'm gonna stop and look at the ends. And by the ends, I mean this corner and this one. If the fabrics are about the same thread count, texture, thickness of the fabric, these are gonna go absolutely across from each other. But if I have a difference in fabric, and since fabric's made all over the world, that's not uncommon, it means one of these might be a little shorter than the other. Kind of like when you're sewing a straight seam and you take a look at the ends when you get close and you find one's a little shorter than the other. Well, what you do is you put the ends together, hold tight, let the sewing machine ease away the difference. I can do the same thing, but I have to know about it ahead of time. So if this one was a little short, I'd simply get a little heavy handed on it. That doesn't mean grab and pull, it means add a little resistance. If it's the bottom one, it's the same thing, just adding a little resistance. Since I'm working with two batiks here, these are actually pretty close, so I don't have to worry much about whether they're gonna match or not. So I can continue to sew my three to five stitches, and I do this all the way until my hands simply are too big to hold on anymore. And that's right about there. My fingers are too big. So I'm gonna stop at this point, take a pin, stiletto, back of a seam ripper, anything smaller than my finger size. Needle down. So if it can't have your needle down on your machine, make a point of putting that needle down because I'm gonna lift up the foot and what I'm going to do with the pin is not just put it on the edge of the fabric, but all the way across that bottom piece. I'm using it as a weight to hold it in place. Now when I bring the top over to match that raw edge, I can put that pin right back on top of both of them. That way they're gonna to stay together all the way through the seam and they won't simply divide as I let go. So I'm taking it out and now you can see it matches both at the beginning and at the end. And I'm gonna turn it over because if you'll notice that seam wants to go toward the quarter circle, let it. Finger press, no ironing. So I'm simply gonna run my fingers along that seam so it'll lay nice and flat and I do not clip my seams. They will all lay absolutely flat without having to use scissors to do any snipping. So now I'm gonna turn it back around, bring that other piece in to show you. I'm now ready to finish the sewing. Here again, this is what I'm making. And so at this point, I'm now starting with this square corner. It might look like the obvious place to start is here. You've got a long straight seam. But let's say maybe at the beginning you're not quite perfect in sewing. By starting always at the point, it gives you that nice long area for the sewing machine to help you adjust in case you're off a little. So I'm going to go right over left again. And this is going to look strange. Here's my square corner. I'm always gonna start at the square corner. And after all, it's supposed to be even when I finish, it's kind of nice to start there. Go right to the sewing machine. Hold those threads again for the first three stitches. That also gives you as tight a stitch from the edge of the fabric as it is a quarter of an inch in. And now the only real issue other than looking very strange is where's the bottom fabric? Well, where it is is right here. I'm going to put one hand on top, the other hand underneath, and I'm going to come across with the top to find that bottom edge. Here it is. Because once I found it, now I can go back to match it. Once I match it, I can sew it. Three to five stitches. So just like scissors come together, they also have to come apart before you put them back together again. And that's what I'm doing. I'm simply checking my way a little bit at a time, peeking my way around. Maybe you want to think about it as playing peekaboo with that bottom fabric. As I come on around, about the time I get to the seam, I'm going to stop and line up the bottom. Now, if you look at this, it doesn't look there's any way that's going to match. But if you'll notice, if I bring this around, match the bottom, needle down so I can lift up the foot, See all that extra fabric that's been accumulating here? Well, it makes it look like this isn't going to fit at all. So what I'm doing is lining up the ends so they match here. Then I'm gonna stop with the needle down. And remember, if you don't have needle down, put that needle down, because I am gonna lift up the foot. 
lift up the foot, take that extra fabric and tuck it back and underneath the back of the foot. And see how that smooths right out, lines up perfectly. And now I can simply finish the rest of my seam. So here we are. This is the one that is finished. Here's the one I just sewed. And I'll turn it so they look exactly the same way. And I'm gonna turn this over. It hasn't been ironed, but I want you to see how this seam lays nice and flat. This one is also gonna go flat toward the quarter circle that would be here. And it means I don't clip these seams either. So this is the whole quilt. If you've done this much, you have made that entire quilt because the first two pieces that are the single quarter circle and single inside curve, that's the first seam you made. This is now finishing the rest of the block. I just need three more of these and I've got another block to make another one of those quilts falling in love with curves. So let's take a look at the finished pieces again. All right, so this is the block I just finished and you can see where it would fit into this as soon as I made three more. And the reason I wanted to show you this, I'm also gonna turn this around so you can see the inside. You always learn more by looking at the inside of a quilt than once it's quilted, because you can't see what's going on on the inside. And I'm standing next to a quilt that's going to be in the AQS magazine this summer. So if you have any questions, do be sure and get hold of me, Virginia Walton, at www.creativecurves.com. I have extra helpful information in there, my website, and the helpful hints area with some other close-up pictures of different sewing techniques, arm position for cutting the inside curves, things like that, because you cut a little differently. You actually cut an inside curve by getting your elbow up in the air, kind of like you're doing the funky chicken, and then using your wrist to turn to, with the rotary cutter. But thank you very much. Any questions, as I said? let me know and we'll see you at AQS on their blog.